Facebook. If you were working in a group of four, you could essentially copy those two folders, give it to someone else to put on their flash stick, and they just do what we did here. You go to the project file, double click, and events will basically do the rest. It'll know, you know the nuts and bolts are reloaded. So, I want you to click on new uh, metric. Remember that the machines are currently living in America. So metric in standard millimeter. So, in other words, like bolted connection, 
with this I can tell it the forces and it can tell me what size cap screw I need to put on. It can tell them all I can ask it. If I'm using this size cap screw, how many would I use? So it does those type of calculations. And then, like I was saying, someone asked me yesterday about V-belts. That's basically a V-belt generator. It makes the two pulleys, it makes the belt. You don't have to draw anything, basically. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on shaft. Projects. No, that didn't work. Um, click on close inventory again. It's almost like it didn't work. Yeah, I did it twice. It didn't do anything. Just run it again. So you're going to click on shaft. When you do, you end up with this big sort of circular thing on your right hand side. So what I want you to do is take this dialog box. Take it to your, so drag it on the heading, it says shaft component generator, drag it just so it's on the left hand side here, so we can see more of the model, and you'll see when you move your mouse over here, you might have to zoom out, I zoomed out already just now, so you might have to zoom out just so you can see the shaft, once, once the shaft is in a sort of place and view that you're happy with, just left click, it'll stop moving around, just so that it just stays there and we can see the thing. So you'll see after you've left click by moving my mouse now, and you see it's not, it's just staying right where I want it to be. So basically the way this thing works out, section 1, section 2, section 3, section 4, okay, 1, 2, 3, 4. So basically what you see here is how it builds, how it builds the shaft up. If I didn't want, see the third section is a cone section. If I didn't want that section, I would select here, and at the end I would have like a cross over here, obviously. Click on that, it would then be made up of three sections. If I wanted to insert more sections, that's what these four buttons here do. So insert a round section, a splitter section, insert a cone section, and then a multi faceted you know, so that you could have a, something you could put a spanner on a type and type. So there's different sections. So let's let's say for argument's sake we want to get rid of that cone section and maybe the cone section is right at the end. So if I select that cone <coughs> and over here we just click on that little cross, that cone's gonna basically bugger off like that. Now we're down to three sections. And then all I do is I go to the end and add the cone section. So just make sure you click on the last one and then click on insert cone section and it will then insert the cone section at the bottom. You can always tell what types, you see it says there's cylinder, 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 cone. Okay. It also tells you the sizes of the cone. Now, there's sort of two ways to look at the, the way of changing the shot. Is the way I would do it, then the way I recommend you would do it. The way I would say you should do it is each section you click on, right at the end there's a little three dot. See, section properties. When you select that, then pricks basically like shows you a picture of that section with whatever options are available to that section. Okay? And then you would say, like, let's say the first section is actually 60 by 120, I can say 60. The length is 120. Click on OK. And that section then updates. So it's literally that complicated. Okay. So it's not very difficult. And then the way you look at these, 
Okay, so everyone find out the concept one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, right? That's quite straightforward. Now this is basically how each individual section is made up. So currently, it starts with a chamfer. So that means at the front of our shaft here, we have a little chamfer. Then we have the cylindrical section. You know, that's pretty straightforward. And then how does it end? So in this case, it's got a fillet. So what it does is it's filleting here. Like you might want to have a recess for a bearing. So a bearing can go up against the side of the shaft. Because you know, obviously if you have a fillet there, it doesn't matter who you're related to, that bearing is never going to go all the way down to the other side. So you would have to have some sort of a groove or a recess there. And then the last section here, this actually allows you to add key, keyway grooves, um, I think there's O-ring grooves, there's a whole bunch of different things you can actually define from that drop down. So if, if we look at that, let's click this little drop down here. You see there's no feature, that means just a straight square shaft. Chamfer, well that's what it is now, fillet, you know, the round version of the chamfer. Then there's a lock, lock groove, okay. Thread, plain key groove, keyway groove with one rounded end. So you see you can basically click from this drop down, choose one of the choices, and it'll then add that on. If we look at the second one, you'll see here yeah, there's it automatically knows it's it's not like here where it's in the open. It knows here yeah, that's where you would want to put a relief for a bearing to go up against the edge. Or for it to go into a hole or whatever all the way up to the edge. So let's choose relief. Um, which one of these I have to just one of them. It doesn't really matter because you can actually control the sizes. So it's not that critical. Okay, we're not going to change any of those. We're just going to click on OK. You see if I zoom in, uh, it looks slightly different now. Okay, the way I would change this, because it just looks so much cooler, is you basically can actually go on these little red grips and actually drag them. Like I said, practically this is not the best way of doing it because you're going to spend a lot of time jumping up and down trying to get the exact things. Normally you've got an idea of your head, of, you know, you've got the sizes sketched out and stuff. So let's just assume this is the shaft. Okay, we're not going to go into that detail of setting every single one of those up. It's just so that you've got an idea of how to do this. Where the really interesting stuff comes in is when you click on the calculation tab. So right at the top there, there's a calculation tab. And this is where the design accelerator actually comes into play. This is where it gets fancy. So my one currently has a free and a fixed support. So that's what these little arrows here are. That's a torque. That's the counter torque. And then we've just got a force going straight down here. So just like the one on the others, over here at the top you've got loads and supports. So just like the other one, if I didn't want my torque, I could select it here and click on the cross that removes the torque from the thing. If I go to supports, that's where you can see the fixed support and the free support. You can't have two fixed supports. So if I wanted to start from scratch, I could go to loads and I could delete the torque. I can't delete the radial, you have to have at least one load, otherwise you can't run the analysis. So if, if I didn't want a radial load, I just add the one I do want and then delete the radial load. So once you've got one, you can delete the second and the third and fourth one. So let's go, you, you see here we have this, this is a different type, so we've got a radial force. Axial force, continuous load, bending moments, the torque, and common load. So those are the different types of loads you can do. So let's say I wanted to add a continuous load. You see basically here it's showing me that continuous load. It's got a length, so how long that load is. Distance from the middle of the section. So that's basically it's seeing from the center of this that's where the start point is. So if I wanted it exactly in the middle, I would use the length of the thing and then subtract half of that. 
So if it's 26, that's 23. I need to move it this way so that it's in the middle of the section. So you would have to fiddle with that a little bit. Okay. But like I said, I'm not going to fiddle too much with the thing. Hopefully I'm, that's enough. Are you guys happy with how to create the loads and stuff? I'm sure you'll figure it out. And right at the bottom, the my screen's a little bit short though. Huh? Right at the bottom, you've got the calculate button. So when you click on calculate, it looks like nothing happens. It's, no, it's not going to take like five days. It's an instant thing. When you click calculate, it either works or doesn't work. Normally, if there's an issue over here, this would turn red. And when you expand, it will tell you which figure doesn't meet the criteria. Because obviously, there's also normally user material. And you'll notice that material is a lot more in-depth than the normal material library we have. This is using a specific standard. I know when it, if you make a brand new project, this normal list is massive. There's about 50 types of just aluminium in this list. So I think this specific project just is missing set to one specific standard, the SR type. So, set your material, set your forces. So basically, these work just like the other thing. When you click on the three dots, that's where you can change those values. And if you click on the graphs, that's basically where all of the graphs are then created for the shear force, bending moment, deflection, angle, deflection, bending stress, shear stress, torsional stress, tension stress, reduced stress, and ideal diameter. If you hit this button over here, so that's basically the report generator, it's the last button on the top right. That exports this thing as an XML file with all of the pictures and numbers and graphs and whatnot. So this thing that we've just done here, it works pretty much the same with the gear, it's fully, it's got a chain generator. So we're going to look at Poly, just because it is slightly different to slightly different. This, if you just click on OK, it then creates this shaft. So you don't have to draw the shaft. So firstly, you can do those calculations on it, and then afterwards, it'll then create that actual physical shaft for you. Yeah, so that's that's one of the buttons here. Um, this bolted connection, I think we'll look at this one next. The bolted connection, I would not recommend using it to create the bolts, okay? Because it does require a lot of power usage. Especially once you start having 10, 15 bolted connections, your assemblies will start to slow down, especially you know if your machine's not the fastest in the world. It'll <coughs> Because it's basically any time you change anything in your model, that thing wants to recalculate itself to see if it's still meeting criteria. So it's doing it for a good reason. But I normally recommend people to use this to figure out if they're not sure what size bolts they want to go with, or they're just wanting to double check themselves, then use that and then go and actually just use whatever bolt nut you were actually going to use. So just click on bolts of connection. So this, this tab here, I'm suggesting don't use it. If, if you do, it will work. I'm not saying it doesn't work. I have used it before. I have customers that use it, but I also have customers that say, when I get to 20, my computer's going to slow, what do I do? And these are guys with like 30 grand computers. <laughs> so we're going to just click on calculation. And like I said, to me, this is the more important part of it. So I'm going to show you a little bit later how to place nuts and bolts. It's actually really easy. The thing that's more difficult to come up with is what size material, like cap screws are we going to be using. So obviously, as you can see here, there's a picture. Okay, there's like FT, FT, the diameter of the bolt, the length of the bolt, the 
basically apply all of these values. So obviously you do have to come up with those numbers, what the maximum axial force is going to be, the maximum tangential force is going to be. So you have to come up with those numbers, but what's really cool, it's got a check calculation. So that's if, this, if we were using a 6 mil, so this is pretty much you just look under bolt. This is the, you're using one bolt, the three diameter is six mil, the pitch is 1.25, the mean bolt, the minimum bolt is diameter. So you you make sure those match the item you're going to be using. And if it's on check calculation and you hit calculate, that'll then be blue if it's fine and red if it's not fine. So let's see if this will work. Yes, it will. If you expand this, you'll see it'll actually say that calculation indicates the design compliance. Uh, in English, it's fine. So let's see if I put it at 2000. And you see it's no longer. Now it's now it's saying it's not going to work. Um, and then it does also highlight which figures being read are the problem. So this specific one is for um, so stress from maximum check value. It's basically saying it's not going to happen. But I can do this. If I go to bolt diameter design and I click calculate. That one will tell me what size bolt I would need. So it's now saying I need a 10 mil. So I was trying to use a 6 mil, but what I should have been using is a 10 mil bolt. If I wanted to figure out, so if I go to number of bolts, and I change this to let's say 8, and I hit calculate. So if I use an 8 mil to do those things, I need two of them. So you see, you can basically use this to either check what you think is going to work. Secondly, you could use it to tell you what diameter bolt you would need if you're just using one. Or if you wanted to use a specific size bolt, it could tell you how many you would have to use. Okay. So this is sort of like something you can do in your planning plans. You would obviously have to figure out what the forces are going to be, but that's, I suppose, why you at the university are going to look. I don't know what those numbers are going to be. Okay, so let's cancel that. So we're not going to actually create, like I said, multiple connections. I would just recommend using that as a design check for yourself. Now what I would say you could use, so if you click the little drop down by square gear, you'll see there's three types. You can square gear, worm gear, worm gear, and bevel gear. So it basically can create those three types of gears. Um, if you click on square gear, it then offers you some questions, basically, yeah? what do you want to do here, what do you want to do there. So what I'd normally say with this, this design guide over here, whatever you set in this drop down is the thing you don't know. If I don't know the center distance, but I know the gear ratio, the module, and one set, Okay, one you can change. Yeah, you can change one set of number of teeth. It'll then generate, it'll tell you what size, you know, what the other number of teeth are going to be, and it's going to tell you what the center distance is going to be. If I maybe knew the center distance, but I didn't know the number of teeth, you'll see now, I can do the gear ratio module, I can't do the number of teeth, but I can do the center distance. You see, just basically set that on the thing you don't know, and it will ask you to fill in the things you do know, so that it can tell you what you don't know. Okay. So, let's leave our number of teeth, let's set the gear ratio to 2.5, let's leave the module at 2, and we'll have the sensor distance at 200. And if you hit calculate, it will then tell you what your gear numbers are going to be. See, in order to achieve the 200 centimeters. distance. Now, just like the other one, if you click on calculation, you have a power, speed, torque, and efficiency. 
Um, once again, material that the gears themselves are going to be made out of, because that's also quite important, because it's made out of lead, it's going to work a lot worse than you know, tool steel or something a bit harder. So once you've filled in these values, you're going to calculate on the bottom right, just like we did with the rest. And if it's happy with that, it doesn't go red. So it didn't go red, so it's happy with what we've done. And if you click on that little button, you then get a little report with a nice story about all the stresses and stuff. <laughs> stuff you have to do manually, I'm guessing. <laughs> so, down there, this is the stuff that the university guys like a lot. <laughs> um, you know, with your gear things. And then once you finish this, if you just said okay, then I actually make the two gears. Now, one word of warning. The gears that it makes is not accurate. When I mean not accurate, if you actually zoom in, the gears might be flashing or you know, if you can see there, but basically, if you make these gears using the way it's drawn it, it will not work. This is not an accurate model of the thing. This is what we call a representation of a gear. There is a way you can generate the actual proper gear profile. Um, so basically, the idea behind this, the norm need. So obviously not so much here. Here yeah, we're more jack of all trades type of uh, country, but like in America, Australia, like I think in Australia you can't even change a light bulb without getting an electrician involved. It's sort of like, you know, every person does their own specific thing. So if you were doing the gears, you would use this to figure out what the sizes are, the modules, the strength of this, all of the, the number of teeth, um, the helix angle. Those are the figures you would give to someone who made a gear. He doesn't need a model. He would use that to then make the gear. So what they then did is they figured, okay, well if we went full detail with the gear, we would add, let's say, three faces to every gear. And there is 250 two teeth between these two gears, which would add 750 faces to the model. Basically, it's going to slow down the model because it's more detail. Anything more detail slows down the object. So, they figured most people don't need that detail, they just need the look. It does actually apply a gear ratio constraint between these two. If I have constraints them and I move the one, the other one would move at the correct gear ratio. So all of all of the functional that looks will look fine, but don't export this to DXF and laser cut and expect that's not going to happen. What you can do It's one, two, three, four extra faces per two. So it's actually 400, like we discussed, 800 extra faces on the model. And this sounds like a lot of this actually is something that will cause slowdowns. So what it then does is it will then export this, that is the proper. So actually I'm lying, it's not four extra faces. It's The other one was made up of about four faces. <coughs> this is would become one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Do you see where I'm going with this? We've got we could actually add like two thousand extra faces to the end. But you can actually you could extrude that. the action. 
story here sank when it should have been. Yeah. So just be careful of that. The first guy actually tried and he did the, I showed him the guest stuff and he went to do it and then he was like, he stuffed it and put it together and that's when I went to research and found this thing. <laughs> and then we were able to actually create that. Okay, so that's your spur gear generator. Um, so like I was saying, there's a worm gear. I'm not going to copy that, just show you. This one, as you can see, is a little bit more detailed. Um, I believe this one's fine. This. That one you could make straight off that model. Then there's the V belt generator. There's your synchronous belts. Rotor chain. So the rotor chain is a good thing, chain ground with you know your gears. We've got synchronous belts and then P belts. So I think your synchronous belts are like the cam belts on your car. So then you've got your B belts, you know, stuff on your machines, your lathes, you have B belts and the ends there. So let's just do a B belt one quickly, just so you guys can see how this comes together. The B belt one our current setup is not ideal. Um, the V belt one works best when you've actually got two cylindrical shapes to connect. Okay, because what basically happens is you then click on the circular face of one, you click on the circular face of the other one. That will then put the pulleys on the know the distance, tell you how long the belt's going to be, um, those sort of things. So the first thing you would do is you could set which belts are available. The classic and narrow. Now, like I was saying, this project that we loaded is currently set to ANSI, so we're only seeing really ANSI things here. But you could basically, those are your dimensions of the belts. You would then use the ISO library, find one that closely matches the one you're looking for. Let's just pretend that one matches the one you're looking for. So you have to select the cylindrical place. So let's just use this shaft, you know the shaft we did earlier, we'll use that as an example. So click on here, then click on the front face of your shaft. You see if you look at it from the top. That's where it basically finds the middle. So you could then do this offset here to specify more on your shaft or more away from the shaft. So you're more likely going to go more on. And if it goes the wrong way, just hit this button here. This flips which direction this is going. So if you say 10, and it goes this way and you actually want it to go that way, just flip and that 10 would go into the other way. So let's say see I say 10 is going away. So like I was saying, currently this thing is just going to move around really. And you see when you change it, you see how it jumps. It's changing it to standard belt lens. Okay, so it's wanting to basically create this lens as a standard lens with belts. So it won't put like a bead at non-standard size. You see how it's jumping. And the thing I was talking about earlier, is you see how I can locate it onto geometry. So now that I've located that one, that one will stop moving. It knows that's the way it's going. There's a direction for orientation, so basically which way the way the belt is turning. Um, This is like how, how the V-belt design, all the grooves of the look. You can do multiple belts. Um, so you see over here where it says number of belts. Like maybe I need two to achieve what I wanted to do. See when I say two, now there's a double. There's two pulleys on, on each other. So that'll do two belts. So basically, 
empty, you would use this drop down here. So normally I do this one over here. Direction driven sliding position. So my second shaft, I would have a work plan that goes between these two. And I would then choose this one. And then this little thing over here will let me choose the work plan. And what will happen is that pulley will just basically jump in different positions, sliding on a specific work plan. So that way you can get the angle you're looking for. We're going to leave it as it is there. Just like the other stuff, there's your calculation, your power tools. You have to calculate this specific one is failing. So this, this is just saying that the smaller pulley here is actually smaller than the minimum recommended pulley diameter. So it's just saying we need to be size. You see how we can Thank you. 